but uh, the difference may be by this time tomorrow, yeah, you might need the umbrella. So I'm tracking some rain in your hour by hour forecast coming up. All right, look forward to that. Hallie, thank you so much. Barry Gordy is back in Motown. In fact, the man who created Hitsville USA was in the old studio to scout talent for his hit show Motown the Musical. And now Detroit's Matthew Smith is live outside. Matt, you got a chance to sit down with Mr. Gordy today. Yeah, Mr. Gordy, fantastic to interview. He just has so much history and he has so much knowledge of what really put this place on the map. And really, truly, that's why so many people actually showed up today. You can see just a few of them still left behind that came up here so they could perform, hopefully get a spot in that audition. They understand that he's heard it all before. He knows what that sound sounds like when it's truly ready to be a hit. And that sound and style that he developed here uh, practically raised a generation. Love sample? I'll be there in a hurry. You don't have to it's as if you've stepped back in time. Ain't no mountain high enough. There, a Diana Ross. Over here. Please don't leave me, girl. Perhaps a David Ruffin. But this is now. People flocking to Motown for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I would be happy just to be casted in an ensemble and just be able to sing and meet people and perform because that's what I love. All ages waiting, some for hours. The hope? To be cast in the next run of Motown the Musical. Just the dream of being picked? Almost too close to speak aloud. I feel grateful and humble. Meanwhile, the man himself just as excited. In a rare one-on-one, -on -one, he tells me he feels like a fan. When you're doing it all and things are happening every single day, you don't get a chance to reminisce and stuff like that. Of course, there's no need to reminisce. Hands fly over keys, music flows, and just like that. I'm gonna try to make you love me too. Studio A is alive again. Mr. Barry Gordy himself, listening to the very songs his label once made famous. Because neither one of us wants to be the first to say goodbye. If you strain hard enough, you can hear the music outside. Of course, out here, if you strain hard enough, you can actually hear the dreams, too. Things have to happen, they have to start somewhere, and I think it's very possible that it could happen here. Hey, maybe it's just a dream for that high school student, but hey, once upon a time, it was just a dream for the guys that you actually see right there in the wind of Hitsville, USA right now. Joanne, I gotta tell you, a little bit of excitement, not just for the singers, but just to be inside that Studio A today. It's been a long time since you heard music like that coming from that room. Oh, it was incredible to hear. I certainly felt like I heard a whole lot of talent. I'm not a talent scout, so I guess I wonder, do we have any indication of what Mr. Gordy thought about what he heard today so far? Uh, he had a couple people that you could see the look on his face when we were inside Studio A with him. He lit up. He was happy. He was excited. In fact, around 5, 5.30 today, we're going to show you one young man, just 10 years old, drew, drove from Louisville with his mom, slept only four hours, and he's going to be going to L.A. to get another look at once again because he just knocked the socks off of everybody that was in that room. Can't wait to bring you that story later on today. Oh, I can't wait. You said 5.30, right, Matt? Yep. All right, we look forward to that then. Lots of talent there. Thanks so much, Matthew Smith. Dave. Prince William and Lady Gaga joining forces. The mission the two are on to make a positive change. And the closing bell just rang a short time ago on Wall Street. Here's a look at how the Dow did today. Not so great. The Dow down 113 points to close at 20,523. Stay with us. You're watching The Now Detroit on this Tuesday. Good to have you with us today. Let's catch you up on the now news feed. Facebook is reviewing how you can report objectionable videos on its side after this post from the Cleveland murder suspect. The company says, as we told you earlier, didn't get a report about the video until close to two hours after it was posted. Facial recognition could be coming to more U.S. airports as soon as this summer. The system to identify every visa holder before they leave the country is being tested now on a flight from Atlanta to Tokyo, according to The Verge. And April the Giraffe's live stream is expected to come down soon. YouTube says, though, in just more than 60 days, the Animal Adventure Park, where she lives, became the second most live viewed channel in the history of the site. Britain's Prince William got together with Lady Gaga today for a candid chat about mental health. It's all part of the Prince's effort to persuade more people to open up 
about their personal struggles and crush the stigma associated with mental illness. ABC's Molly Hunter has more for us from London. A FaceTime chat between the Queen of Pop and a British prince. Hello, Prince William. Hello, Lady Gaga. Early Tuesday, Prince William and Lady Gaga chatting mental health here on Facebook Live. For me, the, the little bits that I've learned so far about mental health is very much the case of, you know, it's okay to have this conversation. It's really important to have this conversation. Prince William on the power of a conversation with a friend or family and Lady Gaga on her own PTSD that she suffered following a sexual assault at 19 years old. Even though it was hard, it was the best thing that could come out of my mental illness was to share it with other people and let, you know, our generation as well as other generations know that uh, if you are feeling not well in your mind, that you're not alone. The two agreed to do more to eliminate that stigma surrounding mental health issues. Lady Gaga planning a trip here to the UK in October and the prince suggesting they tackle this issue together when she's in town. We are not hiding anymore. We're starting to talk and that's what we need to do really. It's time that's that everyone right. speaks up and, and, and really, you know, it feels very normal about mental health. It's the same as physical health. And Prince William giving another interview on the subject today, saying there may be a time and a place for that stiff upper lip, but not at the expense of your health. Just yesterday, his brother, Prince Harry, spoke very candidly about his own battles with depression following the death of their mother, Princess Diana, 20 years ago. Molly Hunter, ABC News, London. Yeah, that was incredible to hear in such an important yeah. conversation that apparently William was really instrumental in Harry getting the help he finally needed to get over some of that. So such an important conversation to have. And if it's a matter of two celebrities, if you will, like that, coming together to bring public attention to this very important issue. It's going to make a huge difference. I think it will. Yeah, I do too. All right, to another Prince now. New court documents on music superstar Prince's death have been unsealed, painting a picture of the singer's opioid addiction. Newly released search warrants show investigators found a sizable amount of narcotic medications located inside Paisley Park. The pills were stored not in prescription bottles, but hidden instead in vitamin, aspirin, and other over-the-counter bottles all over the estate. Other pills were prescribed under the name of his longtime friend and drummer, Kirk Johnson. They were prescribed by Dr. Michael Schulenberg, who told investigators he put the prescription in Johnson's name for Prince's privacy. The music star's ex-wife said she had no idea he was struggling with drug addiction. He was, he was a machine. He was a machine. He just, music kept him going. That was his drug. That's what I knew. What's still not clear here is where Prince got the powerful narcotic fentanyl that ultimately took his life. Investigators have scoured his computer, email, and phone records looking for clues, and so far they have pretty much come up empty-handed. We're learning exercise guru Richard Simmons is hospitalized in California. His manager says Simmons is battling it's, it's severe fabric, indigestion and discomfort right while he eats. They both thought it was a good idea to get treatment. His manager adds that Simmons is already feeling better and is expected to make a full recovery. Simmons has shied away from the public eye in the past few months, raising concerns about his well-being. The 68-year-old said he loves all the people who worry about him and just wanted to take some time to be alone. I mean, people are thrilled to see him because a lot of people were really, really worried he was doing okay. So, A uh, fishing crew in California hooked a lucky catch two hmm. overboard kayakers struggling to stay afloat. This is incredible. The crew found the couple in the water three miles off the coast of Santa Barbara as their nearby kayak sank below the surface. Now the man and the woman, they were not wearing life jackets. They were near exhaustion when crew members arrived to throw them a life ring. The kayakers grabbed on as the crew then pulled them on board. Once on board, that couple repeatedly thanked the crew for saving their lives. You imagine. Wow. Grab the butter. Take a look at hundreds of pounds of corn that spilled out from a derailed train in North Carolina. Two rail cars flipped over and they became unhooked. The corn was headed to a nearby farm for feed. No one was hurt in the derailment and the road should be back open tomorrow morning. Well, grab the microwave for some microwave popcorn. Oh. <laughs> don't think it's that kind. All right, this is something you don't see every day. And to be honest, probably you wouldn't want to. This is in New Zealand. See this? Spiders spun this huge veil of oh. cobwebs across a grassy field. The phenomenon occurred as millions of spiders fled the town below for higher ground. 
A tourist in Taranga captured the results on camera as the huge sheet of webs waved softly in the wind. The mesmerizing field of webs, short-lived though, we're told a dog ran through them shortly after those pictures were taken. Kind of, if that uh, dog was bitten or... <laughs> kind of eerie looking, huh? Very eerie, yeah. yeah. For sure. All right, uh, nothing uh, eerie about no. uh, our day today. Just the brilliant sunshine and the blue sky again today. Uh, it was a little nippy this morning now, Hallie, I'll say that. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Temperatures in the 30s this morning, but we have recovered nicely. And really, we know this is the time of the year. Can't quite figure it out. Okay, the heavier coat for the morning, don't need it for the afternoon. We're sort of in between. Now, we're going to see a milder night tonight, much milder from where we were this morning. And I don't think you're going to need the jacket maybe even tomorrow from start to finish. So there's uh, some good news there. But looking at our 7 First Alert radar and satellite, you can see that the clouds are beginning to increase on the west side of the state. And we're seeing a front. There's a front. It's a warm front front though. It's going to influence our temperatures. It's just back to our west, but it's also going to bring some changes in the sense of rain. We're going to have to deal with that over the next couple of days. 65 degrees downtown, 65 in Ann Arbor. Beautiful sunshine. Can't really beat it. 69 degrees right now in Jackson. You're going to find those temperatures a little cooler near the water like we're seeing in Monroe, upper 50s and 60 degrees Mount Clemens. That's pretty typical with that breeze coming off of the water. But as we look again at what we're dealing with, we have the warm front back in areas like Wisconsin, and then we have the cold front following. This is sort of a complex system where the first part of it comes through during the morning afternoon tomorrow and then the second part will come through Thursday, especially Wednesday night into Thursday morning and stay with us into Thursday afternoon. So just planning outdoor activities a little tough to time out some of those rain chances over the next couple of days. But the influence of the warm front, you see it here, 75 in Chicago, 77 degrees in St. Louis, a lot of warmth to work with behind the cold front. A lot of cool air to work with. 38 in International Falls, 45 in Fargo. We'll see a little bit cooler weather in the four day, but nothing like that. So here's our hour by hour forecast so you can plan things. We're looking at uh, again tomorrow morning, a few showers coming through. Right now it looks to be maybe at the middle or end of rush hour, and then we'll see a little dry time. Redeveloping showers and storms for the afternoon get a little tricky. Notice how they're developing just off to our south and east, something we're going to watch closely for the second half of the day because we're still keeping it in the forecast. It is too close to rule it out. And then we're seeing more widespread rain late Wednesday into Thursday. Thunderstorms included could see a few stronger or gusty storms Thursday into Thursday afternoon. So temperatures tonight milder 51 a low tomorrow low 70s. So definitely a warm up from that front, but dodging a few of those raindrops coming up. I'll have your four day forecast to show you a little change in some of those temperatures that's coming up. All right, Allie, thank you very much. Carolyn Clifford live in studio with the top stories coming up for us at 5. Carolyn? All right, thanks a lot, Dave. Two officers honored after rescuing a pregnant woman after she fell in the water. We uh, seen a lady at the dock jumping up and down. We ran there. Uh, at that point, I was taking my gear off. I, I got my gun off and my, uh, my prep, and I, I jumped in. What happened moments later to save that baby's life? And a terrible accident with a lawnmower. How a summertime chore can turn dangerous in just seconds. It's all coming up on 7 Action News at 5. Stick around and join us, Joanne. Carolyn, thank you. A family on edge today after their pet was snatched from their home. What happened to this little dog that has them worried the prowler may return for more? Also ahead. An execution put on hold. I'm investigative correspondent Jace Larson, and I'm looking into why there's pushback against lethal injections, and this reason may surprise you. Stay with us. You're watching the Now Detroit. Turns out high-profile politicians aren't all that different from regular folks, especially when the cable guy shows up late. Yeah, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee took to Twitter yesterday expressing his frustration with Comcast after their technicians didn't arrive on time for a scheduled service appointment. He started off by asking if Comcast is the United Airlines version of cable and Internet access. Well, his tweets escalated from there, comparing the cable giant to North Korea and the Mafia. His tweet storm lasted about five hours, ouch. Ending with a message though, thanking Comcast for resolving his problem. All right, President Trump talking tough today and signing an executive order keeping one of his campaign promises. Has the president finally found some common ground with his political opponents? I'm Mike Sachs and it's day 89 of President Trump's first 100 days. There are important issues to talk about with the Lions, but as they get back to work in Allen Park, two of the team's biggest stars are changed men thanks to the new women in their lives. What Matthew Stafford has to say about changing diapers, 
That's next. And now Detroit returns in just a moment. Taking action for you from 7 Action News, this is the Now Detroit. Let's catch you up on the Now News feed. Right now, investigators are trying to figure out what caused an Army helicopter to crash in Maryland. It went down during a training mission yesterday. One crew member died and another is seriously hurt. Well, this is terrifying. A mountain lion is suspected of snatching this dog from a bedroom in Northern California, right next to where a little girl was sleeping. The bedroom has an outside door that was partially left open. And Nintendo Classic has gotten so popular, it's now showing up in Ubers. You can see it's in the back seat of one driver's car. Someone just posted about their experience on Reddit, but didn't say where they had that cool ride. The president is rounding out his first 100 days the same way he began them, with a big speech and an executive action. Yeah, today he signed what's called Buy American, Hire American. Here's some video from less than an hour ago of Mr. Trump in Wisconsin where he signed that executive order. He says, quote, it's America first, you better believe it, end quote. Our political correspondent Mike Sachs tells us how this might help the president find some common ground in his young presidency. Thank you very much. Day 89 and President Trump flew to Wisconsin today to put pen to paper on his Buy American, Hire American policy. After a couple weeks of foreign affairs flip-flops from China to Syria, the president's visit to the Snap-on Tools plant to sign an executive action today marks a return to his populist campaign rhetoric. On the Buy American side, President Trump wants to make it harder for contractors to buy foreign materials with federal funds. Everyone in my administration will be expected to enforce every last Buy American provision on behalf of the American worker. And unlike his early flurry of executive actions, which included the controversial travel ban, the higher American action reflects a broad bipartisan consensus to make sure companies can't replace high-skilled American workers with cheaper foreign counterparts. Right now, H-1B visas are awarded in a totally random lottery, and that's wrong. Instead, they should be given to the most skilled and highest paid applicants, and they should never, ever be used to replace Americans. Still, real reform of the 85,000 worker program needs approval from Congress, where liberal Democrats and conservative Republicans have co-sponsored several bills that Trump's action could spur forward. But that kind of legislative win will be a long-term prospect for an administration that has had its share of problems getting to yes with Congress over the first 100 days. For the now, I'm Mike Sachs. Wayne State University boasts a new baseball facility unique to the rich baseball history and the legendary voice of the Tigers, Ernie Harwell. The $2.3 million facility was officially opened today as VIPs and Wayne State dignitaries caught a glimpse of the one-of-a-kind entrance to the field named after Ernie and Lulu Harwell. The inside of the complex features slogans and pictures of Harwell's life, synonymous with baseball. Wayne State University is proud to have a link between Harwell and the athletic program. We'll have a more in-depth look at this new baseball facility coming up on Action News at 5 today with Justin Rose. Well, the Lions are back to work today in Allen Park, but the attention is on the busy off-season for two of the team stars. Exciting time. Brad Galley is here with more. Two feet. Well, two sets of feet, so <laughs> or four, four feet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Matthew Stafford didn't expect that when he was right. ready to announce that he was having babies. Chandler and Sawyer Stafford is what he and his wife Kelly ended up with, twin baby girls. Matthew and Kelly welcomed them to the world on March 31st. Kelly posting these feet on Instagram mm -hmm. on Easter. And today's staff and the Lions, yes indeed, are back to work in the offseason. But the quarterback entering his ninth season is being judged for something else. His diaper changing abilities. I mean, I, I think I'm good. I don't know. I can't, they don't really talk back and tell me I'm bad. So, um, not yet at least. It's tough to, you know, put into words how I felt. You know, it was pretty awesome. Uh, People here that are mothers and fathers probably know what I'm talking about. Just tough to describe. It's an awesome feeling. Just being a part of them and then being a part of you. It's been, you know, uh, life changing, obviously. Um, your world revolves around them, and, and uh, but it's fun. Stafford, not the only one with a busy personal offseason. Golden Tate got married. He said he's happier, he's wiser, he's even been eating better, all thanks to his wife. Smart man already. They spent 10 <laughs> days in Cabo celebrating. And waiting was, was incredible. Elise did a phenomenal job of planning it. 
Um, all the little details were just in incredible. So hats off to my wife. She is the bomb. I got her like a little tennis bracelet with, with uh, you know, some diamonds and it was gold. Her gift to me was absolutely insane. Um, she, she got me a, a, a Rolex watch. So I kind of, my gift kind of sucked compared to hers, <laughs> in, other, in other words. So we had some fun in Allen Park today. A big serious uh, conversation stirring on our Facebook page. If you want to join the conversation right now, Matthew Stafford talking about that contract extension. Hmm. It's a big talker because he could become the highest paid player in the NFL. But he said he's too busy worrying about these four I know. feet to talk about contract extensions right now. He give you any advice? Because your wife is not so far no, away No, I know. Due date for us. And actually, we <laughs> talked uh, at the end of the season, and yeah. he said he had never changed a diaper. I can confirm that I've never changed a diaper either. Oh, so you'll I'll be have, a quick study. I I'll know you will. I'll have to get some tidbits from him. Yes, <laughs> it's true. It's real easy, I promise. Well, it's great. Good luck to all of them. Great to hear of yeah. you know, everything they've been through. And I'm, I'm sure they're father. exhausted, but, yeah. uh, you know, babies will sleep eventually. <laughs> all right, thanks, Brad. Dave. Prom is supposed to be a memorable night for high schoolers, but when alcohol is involved, it can turn tragic. And that's why students, parents, teachers, and police are all coming together to raise awareness. Today, Clinton Township Police hosted a press conference to highlight the dangers of teen alcohol use. Statistics show teens who drink are seven times more likely to be involved in car crashes. 28% of our 11th grade students reported alcohol use within the past 30 days. So that's, that's a bit over one quarter. And of course that concerns us and really fuels our passion to do something about this. After the press conference, three teams of students and officers visited alcohol retailers in Macomb and Clinton Township to remind them not to sell to underage youth. Well, spring is in the air, certainly, which means more severe weather. And Royal Oak first responders want to be prepared. Today, they conducted a mass casualty training exercise with the help of local high school students and Royal Oak Beaumont Hospital. The Now Detroit's Jennifer Ann Wilson was there. If there was a tornado or severe weather event, students at Royal Oak High School would be in a locker room or a bathroom for cover. But for the purpose of this exercise, the weather event was completely unpredicted and unforeseen, and the students were here in the cafeteria filled with windows. Disastrous and deadly severe weather has struck the U.S. multiple times in recent months. If it hits Royal Oak, Emergency crews are ready. In today's mass casualty simulation, as in life, police arrived on scene first. As soon as we went in, the kids were, uh, you know, yelling out for pain, saying like what injuries they had. I have an arterial bleed, so a pretty nasty wound from some flying glass or something like that. Sean McMahon was one of dozens of high school students playing victims with severe lacerations, even severed limbs. And so we just started going around. Uh, checking if they needed tourniquets, they went, if not, pressure on wounds. The EMS couldn't handle it all, so the officers had to step in, so it's cool to see them like work together. It's the first time the fire department has included police in this annual training event. We wanted to make sure that we had a unified command, that communication would work well. Our biggest challenge in law enforcement would be managing the scene, managing security of the scene. Which was a challenge even during this simulation because for the first time, Mom, I'll see you at the hospital. Dozens of students portrayed concerned and panicked parents. Trying to find their children, trying to access the scene when we probably don't want them in there, and then organizing, um, reunifying them with their, their injured children. For McMahon, today's experience could inspire a future career. I don't know if I would be able to do what they do, but something like this would definitely be cool. For first responders. It makes a big difference. Uh, it gives everybody a peace of mind. If the real thing happens, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll perform well. The exercise ended in a debriefing where police officers, EMS, firefighters, people from the school, and even medical staff all talked about what worked and what didn't, so that if this ever happens for real, they'll be ready. In Royal Oak, Jennifer Ann Wilson, The Now Detroit.